Hello and welcome to the Superhero Hub. It's your boy, Big Dog Sam. I'm Matt. And today we're reviewing... The Defenders. Yeah, episode four. Uh, this episode being called The Royal Dragon. And it took me the whole episode to realise why it was called that. Why were they called that? Because that's the name of the restaurant. Oh. Well, there you go. Didn't you clock that, no? No. I was only messing. I noticed within like 10 seconds. I'll be honest, I didn't even know what the episode was called. Oh, whatever. Right, so um, after the events of last episode, the gang find themselves um, like hiding out in the, in the restaurant, I guess. Uh, they're, they're preparing for attack, and in the meanwhile, they are getting to know each other. Uh, so, yeah. I like Best how time, they were quickly. They're trying to definitely build up Iron Fist's character, but a everyone kind of taking a mick out of his stupid gimmick, which is what most people are doing watching the show, and then b kind of adding some personality quirks to him with wanting was it pork or something. And like, it was definitely a big character building episode, I think. A, a team building exercise as yeah. it were they've got them all together they're in a position where they can't move and it's close quarters um i like the way he's got fat cash and they're not afraid to show it like he rolls in and it's just like it it, it was like to the chinaman he was like he, he paid with his black card and he's like paid paid the rent for like six months and like they get they get the fresh food as well so, yeah. yeah, which is kind of, he did a similar thing in his own show, didn't he, with Colleen, whatever she ran. I like how they could just glaze over, glaze over that sort of stuff and kind of not, you know, as a billionaire, but you don't know as a billionaire unless uh, a character of colour brings it up. <laughs> yeah, well. Yeah. But, but, I mean, like I say, I hope they stay away from that stuff but you will see i've got to establish kind of differences between the characters that's his role mm-hmm. um i mean a little later on i mean what i was expecting i was i was waiting for uh, jessica jones to shine as it were so we got a little of that later on uh so yeah basically they're just hold up in the restaurant uh stick shows up with his hand missing um Jessica Jones kind of figures out that um, Matt Murdock's the devil of Hell's Kitchen. You know, how do you know that? I'm a PI. I put two and two together. You know what I mean? As opposed yeah. to, I've no idea who you are until I tell you, even though it's my professional, uh, my profession to like, you know. And also, and I don't want to harp on too much about this and try and make it seemed like a massively big deal because it wasn't but we talked about it in the last episode and like she brought it up in this one which was him doing that jumping stuff it's like even she's calling out how kind of stupid it was it was literally there just for that reason but that was fine i guess mm-hmm. um there's another point I was going to bring up, but it slipped my mind. So, yeah, we get a look at the kind of, obviously, stick comes in, and we kind of get a discussion about the black hand, that there's, like, the five members. Like, I, I, I pretty much figured out Madame Gal was, like, super old. Obviously, we know Alexandra's super old. Um, I don't know how I feel about him kind of dropping Bakuto in there, that it turns out he's like one of them as well, like super a- ancient, obviously you got the Japanese guy. That Bakuto was got... the, the Iron Fist dude? Uh, no, he was like the, do you know the, the one who was training Kali Sensei? Yeah, that's what I mean, he was, he was a bit of an Iron Fist, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, who died, so... It's interesting that they kind of... He just seemed like some leader of the academy in Iron Fist, and then it turns out he's like this, like, ancient, hundreds of years old kind of guy along with him. We have the Japanese guy who was, like, doing the bear, and then it turns out White Hat, or the guy in the white suit, whatever you want to call him, he's one of them as well. So I thought that was interesting that they're all, like, all were in Kung Lun, and then the kind of ideal was to kind of use the power 
for good and then they were like they wanted it for themselves to make themselves immortal and they kind of got cast out and now it kind of seems that their goal is to get back to Kung Lun for some reason and they kind of they want to get hold of I think the plan is to get like the power of the iron fist out of him and maybe you know get like give it to all of them if you know what I mean Mm -hmm. like set it loose or whatever so uh jessica jones is having none of the team so she kind of ends up leaving then alexandra turns up and starts running her mouth offering deals and they're having none of it and then uh jesse goes back to her thing goes on her computer and is like oh all the signatures are from the same person and they span over the decades dating back to the 1800s so that's enough to provoke her to come back in the way of uh dashing a car through the front of the restaurant and uh, taking out a lecturer. Yeah. That was quite, cool. It was quite cool. It's, it, but Dick's role seems to be the the mentor that sprouts out of, you know, the expository dialogue, kind of like the Nick Fury or whatever. Alfred. Alfred, whatever you want to call him. Zordon, whoever you want it to be. He's the guy that stands Master there. Master Splinter. <laughs> Absolutely. Here's the guy that's there, stands there and tells the team everything that's going on and also the audience. So at this point, if you don't know what the hand is or what their general goal is, then he's going to sit there and explain to you. And then, yeah, but basically the action picks up when Jessica Jones comes back. Mm -hmm. uh, that was pretty cool. So, yeah, we kind of really get an idea of what they, what they kind of want. It's interesting that this plot point didn't kind of pop up in Iron Fist. You know what I mean? That all, all it just, yeah. it just happens to pop up with all of them together. Uh, you had, I mean, Jessica went off and um, when she was on a little thing and she went over to the, uh, the, the woman and the, uh, whose husband popped himself and there was like a detail on her. That was this episode, wasn't it? And she kind of, yeah, because I remember the crack on the windscreen. So, yeah. So, it's interesting. I guess whatever that guy was up to, he has a big light. He must have something to do with it. I'd expect I, something to, like, mm -hmm. turn up in her apartment. Like, when he went there and took the guy hostage, it just so happens he left something there, one of them ones. I'm expecting that to happen because... They're... I hope it does because, uh, to be honest, for now, I didn't really get why we needed that scene. That's what I mean. I figured they'd just glaze over it, forget it. It just kind of got the ball rolling. But the fact she's kind of gone back there and they're putting emphasis on this guy being a person of interest, you got to kind of figure somewhere down the road. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so she comes back and then Murdoch takes the decision to take a stupid scar thing off his face. Yeah. And I still don't... I still, why was he wearing it? Um, I think... See, it's interesting. It's really convoluted in the sense that I figure he kind of went there. It's weird because he was following Jessica, so he wanted to get involved. And now I felt like after that, it's like he didn't want to get in like too involved, so he was keeping it on so he could just kind of just, just walk off and like forget about it. But like, it's weird because, like, yeah... Is like that, but it but it like I w weren't getting the indication of that. It's like his his mouth was running, but his actions were doing a different story, and it's like I don't get it. But uh, he, he, he... I, I, I get he wants to keep his identity and whatnot. I understand why he wore it in the building, but once you're in that restaurant and Jessica Jones is there and even a stick in there, it's like, what, mate, why are you bothering to take it off? Mm. Uh, something I picked up on is that. Uh, Daredevil's the best actor there, because yeah. he was bringing up the whole. Um, yeah, there are bits like he was skating over Electra and stuff like that, because he brought up the things he's lost uh, when he was talking to Danny Rand, and he's like, "You're being immature," and it's like, and then he would like made a reference to Electra dying, and he was just like all choked up and stuff like that. It's like I rated that acting. Yeah, he probably is. Then again, you know, we have, they haven't really, the others haven't given him much material to work with so far. You know, I, I, at least do say an Iron Fist has got some lighter moments to kind of hit on. That's why I, I brought up the port thing. Like, it's like, 
he didn't have any moment like that. Just this small thing in his own show. So yeah. at least they're trying to build his character up a little. Yeah, I feel like it, in our review for Iron Fist, we kind of brought that up that come the defenders, they're gonna focus on him like a soft reboot in the sense that you know writing the ship for season two so Mm -hmm. yeah if anyone wants to go back and watch those reviews again then they have to anyway right you can't yeah we're not going to get into another critique of iron fist but you can't have him constantly spouting on and being a drama queen like he was in that show in this show especially with this character you can't have him do that in front of jessica jones it's going to give him equal crap for it you know what i mean it's interesting now, but you got stick there, and he kind of said it himself. And now everyone else is kind of saying it, so I guess they're kind of going to go with it. I don't think they're going to kind of bring it up because it's not like right. it's just this random kid they've just met saying it. It's like now stick saying it, but Alexandra's I, saying it, and then yeah. Also, I think the most pertinent point though was they kind of they tried to it once Matt had taken it off and was talking about the hand and he was. I don't think he was he was virtually getting into an argument with Stick and Iron Fist kind of sticks up for him and Matt basically calls calls him out for acting like a child. It seems like that's their they're trying to give Iron Fist the learning curve within the show. Mm-hmm. Um I figure that covers all the plot points. Pretty much. There's gonna be a kick off next episode. Let's talk numbers. To me, it was very intimate in its setting, mm-hmm. and it was very like it kind of that they're, they're all on the same page now. There isn't going to be any messing about. Will they? Won't they? Kind of stuff. It's like like they're all solid. They're all together now. They've kind of got an idea of what. Well, it's interesting because that they know they're after Iron Fist, so as far as that, it's like as long as they're hanging with Iron Fist, they're all gonna come for them. So it's just sit and wait and let them come to them, and then systematically take out each of their each of the fingers. Um, I'll give it an eight. I'll give it seven point five. Mm. It was okay. It was big on the talk. I I get the need for an episode like this, so let's hope we don't need another one. No, there's no need for another one. Right, get Murdoch in the suit and let's get the story moving. Yeah, uh, yeah. So I took it down a couple notches because, like, you know what I mean. But for what it was, solid. I like the car throwing; that was cool. I'm Sam. I'm Matt. And keep it on the superhero hub. See you next time.